1943, the U.S. Army Air Forces issued an informal requirement for a jet-powered reconnaissance bomber. Several companies responded to the request, including Boeing. In response, Boeing designed the Model 424, a scaled-down version of the B-29 Superfortress, equipped with four jet engines. This concept led to a formal request for proposal to design a new bomber with a maximum speed of 550 miles per hour, a cruise speed of 450 miles per hour, a range of 3,500 miles, and a service ceiling of 45,000 feet. Wind tunnel testing showed that the Model 424 needed a revised design, because of too high drag from the engine installation. The new design, the Model 432, had the four jet engines buried in the forward fuselage. The U.S. Army Air Forces awarded study contracts to four companies, including Boeing. While North American and Convair were to concentrate on four-engine designs, Boeing and Martin were to build six-engine aircraft, powered by the new General Electric TG-180 turbojet engine. After seeing German models of swept-wing aircraft, and the extensive supersonic wind tunnel data obtained from the secret German aeronautics laboratory near Braunweig, a swept-wing design was chosen for Boeing's project. A swept-wing design Model 448, still with fuselage-mounted engines, was shown to the U.S. Army Air Forces in September 1945. The model was rejected, and a new model was developed, with the engines mounted under the wings. This model was approved, and by April 1946, it had been refined enough for the U.S. Army Air Forces to order two prototypes, designated XB-47. The first XB-47 prototype flew for the first time on December 17, 1947, a few months after the U.S. Army Air Forces became a separate service, and changed its name to the United States Air Force. The flight did not experience any major problems, although there was a flap issue, and a false engine fire warning. The test flight proved the XB-47 to have good flight characteristics. During an early test flight, a pilot was killed when the canopy came of at high speed. The co-pilot landed the aircraft safely, but the incident led to a canopy redesign. The second prototype flew for the first time July 21, 1948, and served as a flying testbed in the U.S. Air Force until 1954. It had more powerful General Electric J-47 GE-3 turbojets, which the original prototype was later retrofitted with. The B-47 Stratojet became operational in the U.S. Air Force in 1953. It proved to be a reliable aircraft, although the avionics proved to be troublesome and required a lot of maintenance. The B-47 was also slow on takeoff, and too fast on landings, which made it unstable. Initially, the B-47 was intended for loft bombing of nuclear weapons, which put high stress on the aircraft. This maneuver was soon eliminated. Since the B-47 only had a crew of three, crew workload was high. However few crews felt that the aircraft was unsafe or too demanding. XB-47s and B-47s were used in several nuclear weapons tests, during the 1950s. These tests were described as simulated strike missions against the Soviet enemy. The B-47 was the first line of America's strategic nuclear deterrent, often operating from forward bases in the UK, Morocco, Spain, Alaska, Greenland, and Guam. They were often on alert, loaded with fuel and nuclear weapons, ready for immediate takeoff. By 1956, 28 wings of B-47 bombers, and 5 wings of our B-47 reconnaissance aircraft were active in the U.S. Air Force. In 1959, B-52s began replacing the B-47 in the nuclear alert duties. In 1963, the final phase-out of remaining B-47 wings began, and by 1966 all bombers were out of service. Some specialized EB-47Es were kept in use by the U.S. Navy until December 1977. While B-47s never saw actual combat, the reconnaissance versions were occasionally fired upon when flying missions near and over Soviet airspace. Three B-47s were shot down, and at times B-47s returned fire using their tail turrets. In total, 2032 B-47s were produced.